Gentlemen, hey, congratulations for seven days. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Such a delightful movie. But uh, doesn't this kind of kind of hit home a little bit uh, too too hard in its own way <laughs> since we all experienced that? Um, yeah, I mean, you tell us, but, uh, but yeah, it's definitely a movie that is a product of its time. <laughs> well then, um, Roshan, um, tell us, uh, where the original idea came from, um, for seven days of, uh, for yourself, what, what sparked it? This, um, um, well, it came from both of us and, uh, it was partly because at the end of my residency in May, June of 2020, COVID had just hit um, and it was very much on our minds, but also on our minds was the fact that we were in a long distance relationship at the time because I was in Boston and Kern was in LA and we were feeling the loneliness and disconnection that goes with that. So all of those themes I think were percolating in our head. And then we set out to make a movie under very constrained circumstances because we knew we wanted to shoot in one location with as few actors as possible to make it more likely that we could make the movie. And uh, this idea came to us, but um, but the specific cultural bent of it all actually came from current. Yeah, we were wanting to do something in this world of uh, like sort of Indian arranged marriages that are modernized, like uh, a mix of like online dating and arranged marriages, because we had known many people who were going through that and just thought it was so funny and bizarre, that whole world. And there really hadn't been like a Hollywood movie with like an Indian POV on it. We felt like there was a lot of like maybe a white POV on like what arranged marriages are. And both our parents have had an arranged marriage and we come from like generations of that. So we were like, we've seen other sides of it that maybe we haven't seen in movies. So we had never figured out how to crack that idea. And then we just sort of were like, what if it's part of this sort of movie that we make during COVID? And then sort of it inspired both of us to start writing. Tell, tell us about how this arranged marriage, uh, I, I know you try to explain it in, in, in the film, but you also try to explain it in a, on a modernized way with uh, dating sites uh, that, uh, that is quite different from, you know, like Bumble or Match and all those kind of stuff too. Yeah, the primary difference is that these websites are run by the mothers, by and large, and that they create profiles for their kids. And then it's the moms who are connecting to each other through those profiles and through those websites, and then arranging for interactions between their children. So I would say that's the biggest difference between that and Bumble, because to my knowledge, um, there are no mothers on Bumble. Yeah, I agree. I feel like it's not uh, the website for a quick hookup. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it has your GPA in the profile, yeah. so they've got something else on their mind. Yeah, <laughs> it, uh, it almost seems like it's some it's some kind of a business arrangement or, so, or something like that. And, and it's yeah, like I think it harkens back to the way that Indians have traditionally culturally made matches, which is they are not just matching, in, in some ways actually, that the least of what they're doing is matching to people in terms of their personalities or looks, and they are much more concerned with matching families in terms of backgrounds and interests and compatibility. So it's much more of a socioeconomic endeavor in India. Marriage is like a business transaction in some places. I think the websites partly reflect that. So uh, so when you, you were intending to make this movie, which audiences uh, do you think that uh, would, would try to watch this um, you know, film like this? you know, Indian or non-Indian um, folks? Um, everyone, truly. Yeah. Um, that's like, yeah, I think the hope. Yeah, I think it's a question that would never be asked of um, the person who made Marriage Story because <laughs> we assume um, that white stories are for everyone and that ethnic stories are for ethnic people. But the truth is all stories are for everyone, so. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's a love story and um, it's also part of an experience that we've all experienced, like you said, with COVID. So we hope that um, it's uh, something fresh and new for everyone. Yeah, I know. I, did, um, I, I think when I was watching the, the, the COVID part of the story was, was, was all coming back, was all yeah. coming back to me, uh, you know, from, from isolation to hop, hospitalization. Of course, my hospitalization was Slightly different from the movie, but you know that. That's oh my god! I'm sorry to hear you were hospitalized. Um, um, mine was early. Uh, I think it was uh, on uh, day one of a uh, shelter in place. So. Oh my god! Oh, wow. Oh my gosh. So, what so, a particular experience. I hope it was a speedy recovery. Uh, 
Um, imagine that uh, seven days in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did oh you gosh. have to go to the ICU as well, or were you? Did you? No, remember? no, no, no. Um, it was. I was. Uh, I want to say I was one of the first twenty people in my county to uh, got infected. So at the time, the hospital that I went into, I was the first person. Wow. To, uh, to arrive to the hospital with 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 the infection, so they didn't know what to do. They they had me in an isolated room. Then they moved me into a. Uh, and an entire floor by myself and oh my you know, god what a unique perspective yeah um, and 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 i wanted to do like what the character wanted to do was to walk back home from the hospital mm -hmm. which of course they yeah at, at the time uber had a policy not to pick anybody up um yeah. from, from the hospital and then my business partner went to pick me up my friends went to pick me up uh, my family was not in the city, so so it was a, it was a totally different experience. So how did you get home? Uh, I actually had to call the ambulance. Yeah, that's what we were doing in the early days too. We were calling ambulances to take people back home. Yeah, so so yeah, it's, it was it was a I I liked your version because it's much more <laughs> romantic. Yeah. Well, like we that. had to make some connections <laughs> to romance. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Can you imagine how, the movie ended with an ambulance ride? It's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> we, that, original. Yeah. we can't afford it. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, so uh, Karen, um, how, how did you do the uh, chemistry with uh, DRV? Oh, um, it, we actually uh, luckily already are on a TV show together called Miracle Workers. So we've been working together. We're going to our fourth season this summer. So since 2017. So... We were writing the script with Geraldine in mind, not knowing at all whether this movie would get made or whether she would say yes. And sort of as soon as we finished the script, the first two people we sent it to were the Duplass brothers and uh, Geraldine. And we were so lucky that both sort of said yes, kind of back to back. And we're like, oh my God, I think we have a movie now because we have a female star and then we have uh, producers. And so uh, we were we really didn't have a plan B for if she didn't say yes. And then um, on our show, it's a little bit of a different uh, dynamic. Like it's more of a broader comedy. So I was a little bit nervous going in to be like, will there be that chemistry? But um, I think our friendship and knowing each other for a while probably really helped with that I hope uh but yeah that was always uh chemistry is such a hard thing because you can't really manufacture it you either have it or you don't and we were just hoping on the fact that we had known each other for a few years that hopefully that would translate on screen most excellent and, and Duplass brothers um serve uh you know a very well uh addition to the film um, for you Rashan did, did you learn a lot from them uh, and um, how was your directorial debut yeah, well, we both learned a lot from them. It, Kern has known uh, Mark Duplass for a long time because his uh, second ever movie was with them, Safety Not Guaranteed. Um, so Mark has been Kern's mentor. And that was really how this movie came about. But yes, we both learned a lot uh, from the way that they work, um, especially during the prep period where they connected us to literally every member mm -hmm. of the crew and the onset producer, Liz Cardenas, who ended up really pulling everything together and but they're accustomed to making movies in this way, in a way that I don't think really anyone else who has a recognizable production company in Hollywood is accustomed to. Mm -hmm. So we were very lucky to benefit from their expertise. Most excellent. Well, hey, both of you, congratulations once again uh, for uh, for seven days. And Karen, uh, the first time I met you was for a press junket for a Safety not guaranteed in Los Angeles. Oh, what a cool <laughs> so, <laughs> I remember in the PMK BNC building or something, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah. That, 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 that's where I, re I remember sitting in was like a round table and and, mm. and so on. So that's oh my cool. gosh, that's amazing. That was a decade ago. Summer. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> we're still alive and zooming. Yeah. So. That's right. <laughs> well, anyways, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Hopefully, Maybe we get to do this again.